This is my Q4 copier updates. Some of you might not be copiers, maybe you're followers, maybe just on eToro and you're curious. That's all good. For those that don't know, I do one of these every quarter with my largest copiers. So eToro invites my largest copiers to be a part of a similar session, but I also like to uh, re record them as a live session for the rest of the people on eToro and my copiers. So this is looking back at the quarter that's gone. Um, we'll see, I'll talk a little bit about my background, my journey through trading and finance, how I learned things, my strategy, and uh, talk about a few of the things that happened in the last quarter, as well as uh, what I think will happen in the quarter that is coming. No, it's not Windows. I'm a Mac user. All right, so starting off with my fact sheet. So some of you will know and have seen the fact sheet that I publish. Um, so I like to measure from one quarter to the other. And here you can see my total return from Q3 2020, Q4 2020 has increased by a 146%. So if you had invested with me on my first day on eToro, copied me, uh, then you would through that, that three month period, like me, have made 146% return on your investment. Um, nobody could copy me since then, of course, but this is just a way to say I encourage you to copy for the long term. Uh, just about my, my goal. So I have an annual goal and I have smaller goals in between that, but my annual goal is to beat the S&P 500 by 20% per annum on average. Some, uh, and the S&P 500, you know, it varies. Sometimes it's negative, sometimes it's positive. And I think similarly, I might be negative or positive, um, but my goal is on average to beat it by 20%, which over, you know, years or decades, which would mean that I am giving, creating a return of 30% per annum. No one has ever done this for more than, let's say a decade and a half. Um, but, you know, I think I can do it. And so this would mean that if I hit this target over 10 years, if you had invested 100 grand with me, you would have $1.3 million at the end of that 10 year period. And after 20 years, because of compounding, you would have $19 million, which is quite a lot of money. All right, so just looking at the, the headline numbers, uh, at the moment I have over 20 million AUM, uh, more than 10,000 copiers, more than 120,000 followers. And my risk level most of the time sits around four or five, which I think is a, a pretty decent level of risk for the amount of reward that I am able to give my copiers. Uh, so over the past five, five and a half years that I've been on eToro, I think I joined in June, 2015, maybe May, 2015, I've made over 600% on my money. Um, in terms of an annualized return, I'm beating my goal at the moment. So my return per year at the moment on average is 39%, which means that the 10 year figure and the 20 year figure become a lot better because compound interest is just incredible. Um, so that's just a picture of my recent performance over the past two years. I've, I've returned about 136%. All right. A little bit about my background. I don't wanna to spend too much time on this. So I am a South African. Um, I went to university quite late. Uh, I, I messed around quite a lot, starting and selling a lot of small companies, decided I would go to university at the age of 24, ripe old age of 24. And I have a degree in computer science and applied mathematics. I was born in South Africa. I arrived in London at the age of 28 in 2008. Um, and I had, I had some money, but it was all gone quite quickly because life was expensive versus South Africa. Uh, so I, I've mainly built companies in the technology consulting space. Um, the most recent business, or the largest business I ever built was sold to Accenture. This was the, it was the largest consulting business of its kind in Europe. Um, I didn't make the entire eight figure sum. I had a major investor and a number of partners, um, but I did make a good deal out of that transaction. I then worked at Accenture for two years at their largest customer. And I worked on one of the biggest projects that existed at that time. It, it was hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, being delivered around the globe. So I've advised executives in some of the world's largest companies, many of the household names, uh, many of the companies that are traded on eToro. 
um, are companies that I've worked inside of um, and worked with executive teams and the technology teams. And I've also worked in a number of startups. I, I, I love working in startups um, quite a lot more than large enterprises because there's a lot more innovation and the pace is a lot faster. Uh, so I love writing and giving talks. Um, you probably have seen me writing quite a lot on eToro. I've spoken at some of the largest technology events in the world. I'm a published author and I would love to write uh, more books, um, but we'll see if I get time. Um, and I've won a number of uh, awards around the world for uh, my work in technology. And uh, I'm currently the CTO of a software company called SalesTrip, um, although I I'm looking to go full-time on eToro in the coming months because it's what I love to do. Uh, in terms of my financial and trading journey, so I've been investing since 1999. I started, I finished school and one year later, I was really tired of working. I wanted to, to strike it rich. Um, of course, that was when the dot-com boom more or less happened. And, you know, I made some money and I lost some money for the next 10 years as I learned. I had no experience, no education in the markets. Uh, before then um, and so I made a lot of mistakes and I think net overall I lost money for that 10 year period but I gained a lot of knowledge and then I, I started developing my strategy um, probably close to 2009 2010 and that's what I've been refining for the 12 years since then I joined eToro in 2015 uh, by 2017 I was the number one most copied trader on the platform the platform was quite different back then um, Jay was number one back then, and I became number one, and then he took number one back from me. Uh, I overused leverage, two times leverage. Um, it had served me very well for probably the last six months or one year of that run, and then it didn't <laughs> when uh, Trump took office and the um, market became a lot more volatile. So now, today, I don't use any leverage, or almost never use any leverage. All of my returns are basically one times, and that has the added benefit of there basically being no fees when you copy me too. Uh, outside of eToro, uh, I invest in property. So I own uh, properties around London. I've also been involved in cryptos for nearly 10, more than 10 years now, 10 years. Uh, so I used to mine cryptos in my lounge back in the day as an example. And I have a, a crypto portfolio. YOLO stands for you only live once. A crypto portfolio outside of eToro. And I just hold and hold and hold and hold. Um, and I am also an angel investor, which means that I invest in very small, young startups, which I, I love to do. I advise a number of those types of companies. In terms of my trading and investment strategy, so I kind of break this down into my style, my analysis, and then the strategy itself. Um, so I'm a long, short investor. I am... Most of the time I am long. Uh, I haven't been short on um, many things for a while. Uh, I focus on growth stocks, or well, I have historically focused on growth stocks, but I do diversify get across industries and geographies. And some of you will have noticed that I have been diversifying a lot more recently. Um, I would consider myself low to medium risk. And my key style is that I try to identify bargains months or even years ahead of the market. And this means I, I can look wrong for a long time until I look very right. Um, and that's the kind of thing that I look for. I'm not always right. I, I just I just need to be right enough of the time. Um, and that will compound into a fantastic return. In terms of my analysis, I primarily focus on fundamentals. Not always, but primarily. Um, I do due diligence on those businesses. I like to know who runs that, those businesses. What was the history of that business before I started looking at it? Um, what are the kinds of products that they've made? What are the kinds of products that they, they're going to make? What is their strategy? What's how, And what are they going to do in the future to make more money? Um, I look for um, companies that are hopefully growing um, and the types of growth. The type of growth is very important to me. I also look at macroeconomics, politics, trends across the, the consumer group, youth, societal, and cultural trends are very, very important. If you're going to find companies that are going to consistently deliver double digit growth for five to 10 years, you need to find the trends that are sweeping our society in the various different ways and the companies that will support those trends. And I do use a touch of technical analysis. Sometimes I use it to um, use it hand in hand with fundamentals. But uh, if I'm engaged in a very short term trades, which are rare, 
I will use technical analysis. I have studied technical analysis. Uh, so in terms of my actual strategy, I'm predominantly a long-term investor. Um, so the core of my portfolio, let's say 70, 80% of that is things that I think are cheap and are good for the long run. Um, where the long run could be up to a decade. I do have a number of what I call opportunistic shorter term trades around the edges, the things that where I'm taking advantage of momentum or volatility, where I'm in and out fairly quickly, which could be in, within one day, within a few days, within maybe a week. And I, some of you will have seen that I, for example, I have a number of positions in Microsoft and there might be some that are bigger than others. They're bought at different times, different prices. I might also be long and short on a stock at the same time. And these are all part of, part of my strategy. Cash is a very powerful tool for me and I made a video about my cash strategy in my YouTube channel. So please take a look at that if you wanna know how I use cash. Um, there are a lot of nuances to how you can use cash to manage risks and opportunities. And I almost never use leverage, as I've said before, and I keep my fees as close to zero as possible. And in fact, when you bring dividends into the equation, um, they negate more than all of my fees. So some of my interesting closed positions in Q4, and I've uh, I closed more than these, but I, I, I found these interesting for the following reasons. Dropbox, I feel like Microsoft and Google have eaten their lunch. Um, I'm not sure that they're gonna make it through the next decade. I love them as a company. I was a customer, but I no longer am. Slack was a, a position that I was in for a while until Salesforce bought them. I have exited at the price, more or less that Salesforce bought them because the price shouldn't move much beyond there. Square is a fantastic business. I, I love it. I only exited recently. I think my return on Slack on Square was more than 300% on that position, um, but it is massively overpriced at the moment. And it's been riding on the coattails of Bitcoin for a while. So I think we could see a drop there. I, I welcome a drop there. Alibaba, um, some of you will know there's been political issues around Alibaba. Jack Ma uh, really you know, put his foot in his mouth and created some issues for the company. So I closed some positions. I did some short-term trading on Alibaba too, and it looks like it's gonna recover now. I expect it to probably do quite well in the run-up until earnings and maybe uh, uh, set new records during earnings. Tesla, I've invested in Tesla since the earliest days on eToro. Um, I held some positions for years. I sold them uh, and I've, ever since I've been trading it um, in a bit more of a short-term fashion, waiting for it to come back to earth. And Bitcoin, so I've some of my oldest Bitcoin positions were, I think they might be pre-2018, 2017. Um, as Bitcoin has had gone through the massive rally, which we've seen a bit of a correction there today, um, I've trimmed my positions just to decrease my exposure to Bitcoin um, because it's volatile. That means it can go up, but also down. Um, and I hope it does go down so that I can get a little bit more for the long term. Um, positions that I opened in Q4. So I, I'm not sure if everyone remembers, but at during September, maybe the second week of September, there was quite a large scale sell-off last year and people were worried that the momentum of the bull rally was gone um, but then in early October we could see that um, it was just a correction people taking profits um, the stocks consolidated in a little bit so I bought into a few of the fangs I don't think I bought all of them but I bought into a few of them I've also jumped into ASOS which is the UK retailer I love ASOS um, they were a massive incredibly well-performing business for a long time then they stumbled when they tried to expand internationally and um, they couldn't deal with the demand um, but they have in the past i think two years corrected the issues and are continuing to grow so i took advantage of uh, some dips in the share price there beyond meat um i love the product myself um it is a risky product it is quite actually quite difficult to replicate what they've done. I've spoken to some food scientists, um, but it is still trading at quite a high multiple and has had some trouble through the pandemic. Um, I lent a little bit more on, on momentum and technicals when entering these trades and they're doing quite well so far. Uh, Baidu, I'm a long time believer in the power of the rise of China and the US 
is obviously quite tense about having someone else step in on their territory. And so Chinese stocks haven't been the best performing, even though the companies have been fantastic. And so I've been buying Baidu for years and more recently it's jumped quite nicely. Uh, ADT, this is a weird one that I, uh, I'm not sure a lot of people know about, but ADT, a large part of ADT was bought by Google last year. Um, I think it was 6.6%. 6, 6 and the idea behind this purchase is that um, Google will resell its Nest security products through ADT. So the world of smart security is quite interesting to me. I come from South Africa, which is a place where you need a hell of a lot of security. Um, and this is Google trying to find a great distribution channel for its set of smart products. Um, so Google gets to benefit, but I suspect ADT is gonna benefit a hell of a lot more. I opened up some positions, the stock price dropped off. I think people forgot about the partnership and the stock price dropped off. I think I topped up a little bit and um, I'm holding that one for the long term. I think they eventually that, that partnership will do them very well. And JP Morgan is an interesting addition to my portfolio. It's, it's unusual for me, um, but I anticipated banks doing very well through this quarter based on all of the, the trading and volatility through last year. Uh, the earnings were fantastic, but the market for some reason hasn't awarded them a higher or well, much higher stock price. Um, JP Morgan, the, the US has also allowed banks to start buying back their shares. They weren't allowed to after the big dip last year. And that will mean that the, the number of shares in circulation and therefore the share price per share will go up. So I will continue to hold JP Morgan and may accumulate shares of other banks. All right, I'm not gonna walk through all of this right now. Um, effectively, this, is, this was my forecast in Q3 of last year. So I was saying, whenever I develop a forecast of the coming quarter, I try to look at the bull view and the bear view. Um, you can't just look at one or the other. Uh, you, you can't trade both based on hope. You need to make sure that you have a well-rounded view of the world going into um, any kind of investment strategy. The last quarter of last year favored the bull view. So a lot more of the things on the bull view side came true, but some of the stuff on the bear side also happened. And it's within this framework that I start figuring out the possibilities of how the market might be affected and where I need to be investing my money to make the best of it. All right, so what's next? You still with me? 176 people online. So my forecast for the coming quarter. All right, so I think that the market is still reeling under the effect of how enormous these second and third waves of the coronavirus pandemic have been. The lockdowns are huge, some of them more severe than others. The numbers are worse than, than before. And so that has suppressed a lot of the optimism that vaccines might bring. Um, but eventually that will subside. The vaccine rollout in the UK, for example, I think the number I saw today was over 4 million people have been vaccinated and there are very, they've been very aggressive with um, the vaccines. Um, so I suspect that the picture will become rosier. Uh, and so within the, within the bull view, the bulls will be saying all of the things on the left. Um, so the vaccine is going to be great, uh, the COVID losers, the travel industry, hospitality, it's going to rebound massively. Um, the US's policies are going to be more liberal, they're going to fav favor certain industries. The stimulus, um, the stimulus deal was announced after I made this deck, but uh, it was an anticipation of stimulus and now it's arrived and it's huge. Um, and the economy is going to pick up, everyone's forecasting GDP, gro GDP growth uh, from, the, from the next year and earnings in Q1 will be killer. But then on the bear side of things, and a lot of these things are very true too, um, a lot of stocks are just incredibly overpriced, massively overpriced, and they could stay that way for a long time. Um, but eventually they're gonna come back down to earth. I expect inflation is gonna become something that's important to investors. And I'm not sure if any of you remember, but worries about inflation in 2018 were a large part of the reason that the market was so incredibly volatile. Um, some of these things are already emerging as, as being true. Uh, I would say one, the, probably the most interesting point here is six. So I think Biden's policies, they're, they're going to favor marijuana, uh, manufacturing infrastructure, 
clean energy. But I was looking at I've been looking at the stocks over the past few days, and they're all already very expensive. They they've all been bought up in anticipation of this happening. Um, and number eight is 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 actually something that I think is fairly likely to happen. So earnings season could be great. Stocks could go through the roof briefly. Um, but at some point, the world is going to think, what's next? Okay, the world is opening up now, um, and we will be bridging the gap between being a locked down world and an opened up world. And in between, there's going to be a bit of lag, a bit of uncertainty. Um, and I think that, that could, it could bring the market down. I don't know by, by how much, and I don't know exactly when, but I think that could be potentially one of the triggers. Um, Zooming out a little bit, so you just saw my my thinking in terms of the the next quarter and the previous quarter. Um, so I try to look out, and I find this very interesting. By the way, I read a lot about uh, upcoming trends, and I talk to a lot of very clever people. So in terms of the five year view, I think that you know it's quite likely that some of these things will happen. Most of these things will happen. The ten year view, you know, some of these things will happen. And the twenty year view, some of these things will happen. The further out you go, obviously. The, the more uncertainty there is around um, particular things actually becoming a reality. So I tend to focus on the five-year view, um, looking at the types of companies that are delivering, supporting and delivering these, kind of, these kinds of trends, but also the companies that underpin those, right? So they're Boston Dynamics as a robotics company making some scary and fantastic robots. But who are the suppliers to Boston Robotics? Who sells them their stuff? Um, you would have made a killing if you'd only bought the stocks of companies that supply Apple's iPhone bits and pieces. And similarly, I'm looking for the kinds of companies that will be supporting these trends. Um, all right, so that's it for today. Uh, I started late, apologies. I try to keep the session under 20 minutes. Um, if you wanna get in touch with me, you can use any of these links. Um, on the slide. I did share the link in the chat, but I also will link to this whole presentation in the description of the live video once it's up. Um, okay, immortality. Yeah, that's... We laugh now, but I think immortality in some form is coming. Uh, maybe not in 20 years, though. All right. So questions. Uh, I've seen a few questions happen in the chat. Does anyone else want to ask any questions? The minimum amount to copy is, it's about $300 at the moment. South Africa, how's it put? Hey, Lekka, China. Um, you're looking at the chart and they might have a correction soon. I think I saw you, that's a nice cheeky comment. I do enjoy a cheeky comment. You're probably looking at this, this chart here. Uh, maybe, but as long as, as long as I'm hitting this goal, I'm still going to make a hell of a lot of money uh, in the medium and long term. Uh, all right, what else? Ethereum or Bitcoin? I think the future of Bitcoin is almost certain at this point. Um, it seems to have reached an amount of global adoption within the even the old school financial system that I think it's it's here to stay. Ethereum has potential to be great, but it's it's got a few more hurdles it needs to get through. Um Baba for good. Yeah, I think I think Alibaba's fantastic. It's just that the risk around Alibaba has increased. If the if the government creates too many hurdles for them, then you know, the company could be screwed. I don't think they will, but you know, it could be. Uh, ooh, lots and lots of posts. Inflation supposed to rise company prices, so maybe inflation is good. Inflation is a very interesting beast. Um, and and yes, inflation can be can be good for a while, um, and it is necessary, and it can also be bad. Uh, so if you take a look, I put together something that tries to kind of summarize inflation, the good and the bad, a while back. Um, so take a read through this. This is my kind of flow charts for how inflation works and how it helps and you know what problems it creates and what solutions it creates too. 
Um, you mentioned you studied technical analysis. So I think technical analysis is mostly nonsense. And that's probably quite controversial for an investing platform. I think that most of it is rubbish. Uh, but there are a few things that, that work quite well. And those things that work well are usually the simplest parts of technical analysis. Um, I think that technical analysis also tends to work better in certain scenarios. And that's, for example, Bitcoin right now, for example, I think it's probably pretty good to try and trade, uh, use technical analysis um, when there are big changes in prices and large amounts of volume. Transhumanism, yes. Uh, that's, I think we're not ready to invest in it yet, but I think we will be one day. If I had to invest in one stock, what would, would it be? Oh, I hate that idea. Um, if I had to invest in one stock, it depends what the time period is. If the time period was 10 years, it would be probably be Microsoft. Microsoft is taking over. They've really turned their company around. Um, relatively safe, and they're only going to grow. Um, what are your thoughts in the travel industry? So in the travel industry, I, I, the travel industry is a big industry, and I've only got so much time. So I tend to only spend time in a few areas. I looked at airlines a long time ago, and I looked at those companies that had that were good businesses before the crash, and also had a lot of money because I expected this to go on for a while and they need the money to survive. And so I picked, if you look at my portfolio, there'll be a few companies there. Wizz Air uh, is one, um, EasyJet is another, Ryanair is another. I've I favored more of the local airlines uh, be, or domestic airlines because they're more likely to recover. Domestic travel is more likely to be allowed and recover before international travel. Um, oh, there are lots more questions. Okay, I'm gonna try to get through, let's say three more. Um, because I'm running out of time. Will I stay on eToro? I will stay on eToro. I will stay on eToro until, um, I don't think I'm logged in at the moment because, you know, my laptop was updating itself. Um, I will stay on eToro at very least until my portfolio value is a million, a million dollars. Um, but probably beyond that, because I love what I do. Oh God. Um, okay, while I do this, what do I think of NIU? Sorry, I don't know that's stuck. Uh, Tend you didn't see that. Um, sorry, I'm not gonna give stock recommendations or all companies that I, I can't get to all companies. Neo, I love the company. Love, love, love the company. Stock price is nuts. Um, I'm waiting for, for a nice consolidation to happen. All right. Uh, you see money transferring from tech and to travel? Yes, I, I do. And, and you, will have noticed if for those that do watch my portfolio that I have been diversifying out of tech a fair amount recently. There are, there are some exceptions, but mostly I'm starting to hedge. Not all tech is overpriced. Not all, not all tech is massively overpriced. Some are still okay. Um, and I will never completely exit tech because it will continue to be a growth industry for ever. Well, not forever, but at least for the next two decades. And so you might have seen that I'm starting to change to these types of assets. Um, so I keep a, to finish that question, you can see that I've been building quite a big cash position and I might build it even more because I do think there will be a rotation and I think it could be quite sharp. I'm kind of expecting a V shape uh, trajectory through the markets this year. So when tech, when money rotates out of tech, tech is so big that it'll take the whole market with it. Um, money will move into other parts of the stock market and they will uh, recover like crazy. So they could be, I'm not sure how deep that, that V might be, but that's kind of what I expect. 
Um, do you really believe in genomic stocks? I do believe in them. I think like any young industry, there will be, it's a bit of the wild west right now. There'll be a lot of losers and there'll be a few companies that, that take it all. I'm a bit worried about ARK investments there. <laughs> I think people are getting very excited about ARK and they're just jumping into whatever ARK puts into the ETFs, um, driving those prices up. So some of those things are looking very expensive. Uh, what do I think of the state of the dollar in the next 10 to five years? That is an interesting question. And I don't know, but the things that I will be watching will be other currencies. So uh, China is going to be the first mega power to rise, then India. Um, and I'm wonder, I, if you saw in my slide, I, I think that we will one day see the rise of some kind of international currencies. International meaning that they're, they're not created by any government. They're, there's no central bank in a government that controls them. Okay, all right, so I'm going to stop there because it's been quite a long video. Thank you for those that stuck around and, and waited for me to get started. I promise next time I'll try to get all my updates out of the way well in advance of me starting my video. Um, this video will be recorded, so it'll be available on my YouTube channel. And if you have any questions, please send me a message on eToro. And also, if you want to talk to me one-to-one, -one, uh, you can join my Discord server. I put up an invite URL every few days. All right. Thank you. Speak to you soon. Bye.